What if I told you that one of the founding members of the Whalers was not just a musician, but also a revolutionary and a defender of human rights? This is the enigma that is Peter Tosh. Born in the rural tranquility of Grange Hill, Jamaica, Tosh's early life was far removed from the fame and recognition he would later attain. His love for music was a constant, a spark ignited in the humble beginnings of a church choir, but it was his move to Tosh's trench town that marked the real genesis of his musical journey. Here, amidst the grit and grime of the slums, the young Tosh discovered not just his unique voice, but also his passion for activism, a theme that would deeply resonate in his later works. It was also here that he met Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler, forming a lifelong bond that would give the world one of its most influential reggae bands, the Whalers. In the slums of Trenchtown, a young Peter Tosh found not only his voice, but a lifelong brotherhood in the form of the Whalers. With the formation of the Whalers in 1963, Peter Tosh, Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler were on the brink of creating a musical revolution. This Jamaican reggae band, born in the heart of Kingston's Trenchtown, had a rocky start. Their journey was filled with struggles, from battling poverty to overcoming the hurdles of a nascent music industry. Yet their shared passion for music and a burning desire to voice their reality led to the birth of reggae, a genre that would soon take the world by storm. In The Wailers, Peter Tosh's role was pivotal. His deep, compelling voice added an unmistakable texture to the band's sound. He was not just a singer, he was a lyrical genius, penning songs that echoed the strife and resilience of their community. The Whalers were not just a band for Tosh, they were a platform for expressing his views on social and political issues. As the 70s rolled in, Tosh set out on his own, speaking out against injustices, advocating for the legalization of marijuana, and creating music that resonated with millions. He was no longer just a member of the Whalers, he was Peter Tosh, the solo artist. His first solo album, Legalize It, became a rallying cry for cannabis enthusiasts and activists worldwide. But it wasn't just about marijuana. Tosh used his music to address broader social issues, as he did in his second album, Equal Rights. This album was a powerful statement against injustice and inequality, filled with songs that are as relevant today as they were back then. Tosh was more than a musician. He was a vocal advocate for human rights, using his platform to condemn apartheid in South Africa and promote peace and unity. His music was his activism, his voice for those oppressed and marginalized. Tosh's music was far more than just entertainment. It was his medium of protest, his tool for change. On September 11th, 1987, the world lost a musical legend and a fierce advocate for social justice. On this fateful day, the life of Peter Tosh, one of reggae's most influential figures, was tragically cut short in a brutal home invasion. His death sent shockwaves through the music industry, a voice that once reverberated across continents, spreading messages of peace, equality, and love, was abruptly silenced. The news of his untimely demise reached the ears of millions, leaving his fans and fellow musicians heartbroken. The loss was not just of a musician, but of a poet, a philosopher, a prophet who used his music as a tool to fight injustice and inequality. The world mourned the loss of a man who dared to speak his mind, who dared to dream of a better world. Peter Tosh's voice may have been silenced, but his music and his message continue to live on. His spirit remains alive in his timeless music, continuing to inspire and motivate generations. Despite his untimely death, Peter Tosh's contribution to music and society remains alive and relevant even today. His influence has reverberated through the years, touching the hearts of not just reggae fans, but music lovers worldwide. His posthumous recognition has been significant, a testament to his enduring legacy. In 2010, Tosh was rightfully inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, a prestigious honor that immortalizes his name alongside other musical legends. But his influence doesn't stop there. Listen closely to the reggae beats today you'll hear the echoes of Tosh's melodies, his poignant lyrics, his radical spirit. His songs continue to inspire, to challenge, to provoke thought and conversation. They remind us of the power of music, its ability to transcend borders and to speak to the human condition. So to answer our opening question, yes, Peter Tosh was indeed more than just a musician. He was a revolutionary, an advocate, and most importantly, a voice for the voiceless.
not, I am not here to be competitive and the music, my father's music is not for competition because if you go inside the Garden of Eden, there are many beautiful flowers. Each of them has a different color and each of them is a different species, but it does not compete, see? So music should never compete because it comes from the same divine mind. We had a voice that could, me and Bonnie together, had the kind of voice that could decorate Bob's music and makes it beautiful. So we just did that with wholeheartedly. We all used to go to church. We don't go to church anymore. We went to church to search, see, and know that we found what was reality and the righteousness. We just relax. As you know, and as many other people know, that reggae has been here for a good time, time enough for it to be exposed, to be known, to be heard, and to be loved by people who love dirt. See? Because I hear people dance to all kind of dead music, music that comes today and die tomorrow. See? And they elevate and they praise and they promote and they love those kind of music. But the music that has the spiritual medicinal upliftment, they don't li like to promote it because it is branded political within the shit stem. Mm -hmm. But the people knows the potential of the music or else 40,000 people would not stand up to see or to hear this music. See, and I don't have to go anywhere and sit down and say, well, I'm going to try and make a song. I just sit down, relax, and if I have my guitar, mm -hmm. it's music. Mm -hmm. you know, there must be a song, because mm -hmm. in the Garden of Inspiration, songs mm -hmm. are, music is unlimited, mm -hmm. unfinishable. So, yes, I am.